Total Seek antibodies enable protein detection by sequencing and integrate seamlessly into single cell transcriptomics workflows. In this video, we will demonstrate how to use Total Seek antibodies for SiteSeq applications. For this application, Total Seek A, B, or C antibodies and cell hashing reagents can be used with 10x genomic single cell instruments. For this demonstration, we will be using one of our universal antibody cocktails to stain human PBMCs. If you are building your own antibody panel, volumes and cell numbers may need to be adjusted. This protocol will cover cell surface labeling, gem generation and barcoding, post-gem cleanup, cDNA library amplification, and gene expression and cell surface protein library construction. Begin by preparing your cell suspensions. This protocol has been optimized using fresh human PBMCs isolated using FICOL gradients and mouse splenocytes prepared using mechanical dissociation. Carefully count all cells to ensure accurate quantitation and assess cell viability. The ideal cell viability is 95% or greater. Dilute cells with cell staining buffer in a microcentrifuge tube and vortex. Volumes and cell numbers used in this video are appropriate when staining in a 50 microliter reaction, like when using our universal antibody cocktails. They may be scaled if you need to stain in larger volume because you are assembling your own antibody cocktail or using one of our TBNK cocktails. To block cells, add 2.5 microliters of human true stain FCX blocking reagent or 0.25 microliters of true stain FCX plus anti-mouse antibody. The final blocking volume should be 25 microliters. Incubate for 10 minutes on ice or at 4 degrees Celsius. While blocking, you may prepare the antibody pool. Use one microgram or a titrated amount of each total seek antibody, cell hashing reagent, and or biotinylated antibody. If using a BioLegend antibody cocktail, prepare the panel as indicated in the instructions card included with your product. If the antibody cocktail volume is less than 25 microliters, add cell staining buffer up to 25 microliters. Centrifuge the antibody pool at 14,000 G for 10 minutes at 2 to 8 degrees Celsius before adding to the cells. Carefully pipette out the prepared total seek antibody pool, avoiding the bottom of the tube. Add this cocktail to the 25 microliter blocked cell suspension. Incubate for 30 minutes on ice or at 4 degrees Celsius. Add 3 milliliters of cell staining buffer and spin 4 degrees Celsius for 5 minutes at 400 to 600 G. Repeat the wash two more times for a total of three washes. If using a biotinylated primary antibody, incubate the stained cells with the appropriate oligobarcoded streptavidin for 20 minutes. Repeat the washing steps. Add 200 microliters of cell staining buffer to the cells for an approximate final volume of 250 to 350 microliters. Slowly filter the cells through a 40 micron flow me cell strainer. After filtration, verify the cell concentration and viability. Cell viability should be greater than 90%. Using PBS, adjust the cell concentration according to the input requirements of your single cell partitioning platform. We will now demonstrate a general protocol for single cell generation using 10x Genomics Chromium Controller. Prepare the MasterMix and 10X Genomics Chromium NextGem chip according to the manufacturer's recommendations.
Eject the tray on the controller and place the assembled chip with the gasket into the tray. Confirm the program on the screen and press play. The run will complete in approximately 18 minutes. After completion, proceed immediately to the next step. Eject the controller and remove the chip. Discard the gasket. Open the chip holder and fold the lid back until it clicks to expose the wells at 45 degrees. Slowly aspirate 100 microliters of gems from the lower points of recovery wells in the top row labeled 3. Do this without creating a seal between the tip and the bottom of the well. Withdraw the tip from the well. The gems should appear opaque and uniform. Over the next 20 seconds, dispense the gems into a tube strip, keeping the pipette tips pressed against the sidewalls of the tubes. Incubate the gems in a thermal cycler for 45 minutes at 53 degrees Celsius, 5 minutes at 85 degrees Celsius, and then hold at 4 degrees Celsius. You may store these at 4 degrees Celsius for 72 hours or at negative 20 degrees Celsius for one week. We will now continue with the post-gem cleanup. Add 125 microliters of recovery agent to each sample at room temperature. Wait two minutes without vortexing or mixing. Slowly remove and discard the 125 microliters of recovery agent, which is now a pink oily partition at the bottom of the tube. Do not aspirate the aqueous sample. Use the DynaBeads cleanup mix following the instructions in your 10X Genomics user guide. For cDNA library amplification, prepare the amplification with primers provided by 10X Genomics. If you are using TotalSeq A antibodies, additional primers will be needed. Incubate in a thermal cycler, following the protocol in the appropriate 10X Genomics user guide. After incubation, clean up the cDNA using SPRI Select Reagent. Place the sample on magnet on high until the solution becomes clear. The pellet contains the gene expression library and the supernatant contains the cell surface protein library. Proceed with the pellet cleanup procedure to generate the gene expression library and the transferred supernatant cleanup procedure to generate the cell surface protein library. After pellet cleanup, samples will be used for cDNA QC and quantification. Run each sample on a bioanalyzer or tape station to check the quality of the libraries and quantify them using standard methods. Prepare mRNA libraries for sequencing by following the 10X Genomics User Guide. To generate the cell surface protein library, prepare the sample PCR mix. Incubate samples in a thermal cycler. For specific PCR conditions, refer to the format appropriate protocol. When using TotalSeq A reagents, reference the BioLegend protocol. For TotalSeq B or C, reference the appropriate 10X Genomics User Guide. Perform post-ADT HTO library cleanup using the SPRI Select reagent. Run each sample on a tape station to check the quality of the ADT library. Quantify using standard methods. Store libraries at 4 degrees Celsius for up to 72 hours or at negative 20 degrees Celsius for long-term storage. ADT HTO libraries are now ready to be sequenced.